Hey, how's it going everyone? Tazen here and today I'm providing you all a descriptive outline of all eight phase art epitaph transformations of Haseo's fifth form. So just briefly overviewing the weapon itself, the Gate of Ouroboros or Ouroboros is an exclusive powerful weapon in volume 4 reconnection harnessed by Haseo in his fifth form. It's known as the eighth phase sword because it possesses the power of all eight epitaph phases whereby the eight blade segments each represent a different epitaph phase. So dual swords, broadswords, scythes and dual guns and his regular arts can't be used by Asayo once he transforms into his fifth form, as we know of yet, but he can instead use the exclusive powerful arts of the eight epitaph avatars. So this allows the gate of Ouroboros to change into various forms of energy weapons with their own special abilities that resemble the weapons previously. Now, it's still unclear as to whether Haseo will permanently be stuck in his fifth form or not, so it's possible he will still be able to use his other weapons and regular arts if he's able to switch back to a previous form. So kicking things off with Haseo's first phase art transformation, it is known as Fierce Decapitation or Violent Decapitation, and it is associated with the first phase epitaph titled Skeeth, the Terror of Death. So the Gate of Robert transforms into an easy to use energy scythe that is able to deal high consecutive damage attacks to an enemy. It has no special ability, but instead it deals high damage and is easy to use. Haseo's second phase art transformation is known as the Flight of Deceit, and that is associated with the second phase epitaph titled Enus, the Mirage of Deceit. The Gate of Ouroboros transforms into dual lances that can do aerial attacks, and it has a special effect at damaging flying enemies as well as being able to deal various stat decrease effects. Haseo's third phase art transformation is known as Relentless Burgioni, I can never say that word, or Sprout of Severity. It is associated with his third phase epitaph titled Magus, the Propagation. So the Gate of Ouroboros transforms into an offensive and defensive uniquely shaped sword that resembles somewhat of a cross between a tree branch and a Kingdom Hearts Keyblade. It can hit enemies with a whirlwind attack and has a special effect of absorbing damage it deals to heal Haseo's HP. That's really cool. Haseo's fourth phase art transformation is known as Fated Carnage Mandala or Heaven's Decree, Asura and Mandala. It's associated with the fourth phase epitaph titled Vigil, the Prophet. In this form, the Gate of Robbish transforms into a giant hammer that can swing down and strike a wide range of enemies with low hits and big shockwaves, essentially blowing them away. And it has a special effect against armored hard-shelled enemies. Asaya's fifth phase art transformation is known as Fate of Blossom or the Great Wheel of Fate and is associated with the fifth phase epitaph titled Gore, the Machinator. The Gate of Robbish transforms into twin blade like jewel swords that do fast, high damaging slashes. And like the second phase art transformation, it has a special effectiveness against flying enemies also. Haseo's sixth phase art transformation is known as Voluptuous Crimson Cyclone or Fascinating Crimson Whirlwind. It's associated with the sixth phase art epitaph titled Maha the Temptress. The Gate of Robbers transforms into long clawed jewel talons in both of his hands that can do consecutive attacks and unleash a rose like aura to blow enemies away. It has a special probability effect of inflicting a charm status on an enemy. Asayo's seventh phase art transformation is known as Gem of Vengeance or Jewel of Revenge, and it's associated with the seventh phase art avatar titled Tavos the Avenger. The gate of Ouroboros in this form transforms into a large mace that, after dealing multiple hits to an enemy, its rotating tip spins, allowing it to deal multiple stages of damage. Like the fourth phase art transformation, it also has a special effectiveness against armored hard-shelled enemies. And lastly, Asayo's eighth phase art transformation is known as Judgment of the Evil God. It's associated with the eighth phase epitaph titled Corbinic the Rebirth. So in this final form, the Gate of Robbers transforms into an energy cannon gun that burns enemies it shoots in its line of sight in front of it. And it has a special ability of dealing high damage long range attacks. So these are all really cool looking at the different eight transformations. As you can tell, there are differences between them all in terms of the special effects they do, whether it being high damage, targeting certain types of enemies like flying enemies, armored shell enemies, as well as doing, you know, uh, charm effects, negative stat decreases. And it's cool to see that some of them have, you know, crossover effects. Like I was saying, certain 
There are several phases that both do special damage against armored hard shells, two that do damage against flying enemies. Now in terms of how this all works, I feel this is a really great way of, you know, strategizing your game, which form to use. And at the moment, we still don't know how these forms work, you know, and how we get access to them. Are these forms that over the period of the game, Haseo, you know, basically learns to harness each of the different forms at different stages. So he starts off first learning the first phase art transformation, then eventually by the end of the game, he has all eight. Or is there a point in the game where he gets the fifth form, where he basically gets access to all these eight transformations, but he can't just transform into them immediately. Maybe the way he activates these transformations is with some sort of meter or gauge. And when it charges up, Asayo is able to activate a phase art transformation. And in doing so, he's only able to use it for a limited period of time. And again, this is really cool because maybe you then have to strategize which transformation to use depending on which enemy or enemies you are fighting. So this will be really cool to see how it works and also how long is it between the transformation runs out to when you can use it again, if that is the case. I'm really excited to see how this plays out. You know, this is something I feel will be quite different to the previous three volumes and even the previous Dot Hack games. So it'll be cool to see how it all works. But regardless, I mean, there are so many more things we could sort of uh, think of in terms of how the eight transformations will work. Again, this is really exciting and I've made sure in this video to not reference who each avatar dwells within because I don't want to spoil this for new players. But for people who have already played volume one to three, you will already know which character each epitaph is associated with. So yeah, anyways, let me know your thoughts on the transformations. What are your favorite? What look the best to you? What sound like the most attractive in terms of playing style? Maybe you like using twin blades. Maybe you like things like a high energy cannon that deals long range damage. I'm really excited to use them all. I feel like this is just gonna be so, so much fun to play with. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed and to the next video, stay spot on. Thank you.